Now I got in this bottle some saturated potassium sulfate, which means I basically just mixed up as much as it possibly could hold, stirred it up for a very long time, and then um, a little too much here. And then uh, no, never add back to the stock bottle. No, no. That's right. I know, but I'm using the same one, and I'm throwing it out when I'm done anyway. So um, let's see. I want to see where I want to put this so you can all see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, that's saturated sodium uh, or potassium sulfate. Now, that means it has right now as much potassium sulfate dissolved as it possibly could. Now, we all know about solubility. Like dissolves like. I'm going to add to that a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Now, isopropyl alcohol is not as polar as water is. So it can't dissolve that ionic compound quite as well. So this is pretty cool to watch. Pour a little of this stuff in here. Explosion. Nothing ever blows up. Nothing ever blows up. And look at it. It's clouding up. It's clouding up. And I know you were just hoping that we were done with this, but we ain't. We're getting another snow this weekend. Uh, See? Ah, uh, we're getting out early. It's coming down. Isn't that cool? Can y'all see it snowing? You can't see it snowing? Something about snow globes. I'm, put, I, I'm, I'm standing in front of my dark colored shirt so you can see it. Yeah, people always ask that. It's like, what they make? No, snow globes is like a little piece of plastic or something there. Wow. Um, it's not real snow? No, it's not real snow. What is it? Well, basically, it's sodium, I mean, I keep saying sodium, potassium sulfate coming out of solution because it's no longer can it dissolve in there as well. So look, it's just flurrying right now. We'll, we'll shake it up a little bit. And it's starting oh to come God. down. Oh it's like a blizzard now. Oh don't want to drive in this yep. <laughs> Don't take the car out. I'm telling you. You got, you got four-wheel drive? Because you ain't getting home. Now, once that's done, if you put a cap on the top and put it upside down, you can do the same thing. No, not really. It's just going to stay. It won't slow that deep. Well, it's actually just they're kind of... What's going on, Garrett, I only, that was only a quarter. All right, we got about a half an inch. Tom Clark was wrong again. By the way, we are really supposed to get more another yeah, storm on Sunday. It's coming down. All right, now look, at, that's a fancy precipitate. We've seen some other precipitate. We saw yellow ones. We saw white ones. We saw pink ones. We saw In, in the labs, we saw a bunch of precipitates. I'm going to show you now how you actually predict a precipitate. All right, um, so get your notes out if you don't already. Turn that front light off. I will look at this guy. He's going to keep snowing for a while. Some of you won't be able to take your eyes off. But, um, precipitation reactions. Okay, how are we going to be able to predict these guys? Well, we're going to use the same chart you've been using. Get that out if you haven't already. And we're going to show you how to use that chart to predict. I kind of lied to you yet again. I always say that. I lied to you. I kind of lied to you again. Back when we did types of reactions, I told you, if you looked underneath your uh, last one on that sheet, the common ion sheet, if you looked up there, it said exchange reactions or double replacement. The double replacement exchange reactions, you just wrote them down. You just assumed that they worked. Well, I hate to tell you, they don't all necessarily give you a precipitate. We're going to be able to predict that now. Okay? So get that chart out after you copy that down, and let's look at some examples. Now the precipitate, by the way, first thing you got to get across your head, in your head, guys, look here. The precipitate is the insoluble stuff, the white stuff in this case that's falling to the bottom of the, of the uh, test tube when we did it with a test tube, graduated cylinder today. All right, so you got to look at this reaction, because that's all the notes there really are. you got to look at this reaction to be able to predict who on the other side is insoluble. That's what you're going to be looking for. So I, I wrote this very small because I have to fit it all in one line. You have to write this very small as well. Because you got to fit it all with start. Start way over to your left when you go to write this equation down. Fly it way over to the left, guys, because you got to fit the rest of this. It should be no more than halfway across your paper. So I've got to fit all one line. Silver nitrate plus copper 2 chloride yields. Now, I tell you in this guy, because I've written the AQ right in there, you know that those guys are soluble already. You don't even have to look them up. Do you understand? You know they're soluble. You don't need to look those guys up. What you need to do is complete this equation and then look up the other two guys. Okay? So let's do that after you copy them down. Okay. 
it's like with H2O? Yeah, well, no, this is different. This is not. These guys are not just dissolving. Good point. The ones we just did the other day, I just took, for example, copper chloride yields in water, or silver nitrate yields in water. What does it do when you break something in water? This is a chemical reaction. So how did we finish this last, I don't know, maybe three, four months ago? How would you have finished this? Silver chloride. Actually, I think I actually have this written out. I don't even have to do it. Silver chloride or plus copper two nitrate, or either way. It doesn't matter which one you write first. Copper two nitrate plus silver chloride, or silver chloride plus copper two nitrate. Now, I probably shouldn't have put those little letters in there because I want to, yeah, the next time I do this, I'll probably take them out of there. I want you to look them up and tell me which one is aqueous and which one is not. This is the weird part about this guy. Use your sheet. I've kind of given you the answer already, but I, I, there's a big mistake people make here. A huge mistake, actually. Use your sheet and look up copper 2 nitrate. What is copper 2 nitrate? What does it say next to him? Now, that's the crazy part, people. Look up here. It has a big S right next to copper 2 nitrate, right? Yet, I don't put an S there. I put a Q. It means it dissolved in water. Look up silver chloride. What letter's next to him? A, little a. Yeah. Anything other than S, I, little a, big A, P, means he's insoluble. And I put what next to him? Why do I put that S next to him? Because... He's a solid. And the solid is the precipitate. This is what is confusing for most people. By the way, there's something else you do, too. You put a little down arrow next to that guy, too. That shows that he's falling to the bottom of the beaker. That's what you kind of think of it that way. Okay? So I'm going to do a couple of these on the board, and I'm going to give you a problem to do a two for homework. But let's finish this guy up. Obviously, I'm not done. What do I have to do now? AG plus 1. NO3 minus one. I gotta write these all correctly. I'll do this one quickly. AQ plus Cu plus two Cl minus one. So the correct formula for copper two chloride would be CuCl2. AQ yields Cu plus two NO3 minus one CuNO32 aqueous plus AgCl plus one minus one S. One other thing I have to do, what's that? I have to bounce, yeah. I got two chlorines here. I only have one there, so I'll put a two in front of that silver. I give you two silver, and a two in front of that one. And I give you two nitrates, but I already have two nitrates, so I'm good. That's all I need. How about that? All right. Now, obviously, I want to do another example or so to make sure you understand what to do. So I'll do one more, but I want you to do more of this one on your own. Okay, see if you can figure it out. We'll probably do two more examples I think I have. Now, I, obviously, I went through that last part very quickly, because when did I teach you how to do writing charges and writing compounds and balancing equations? I mean, we did that for forever, and we've been using it for a long time. So I don't really want to worry about that right now. I want to care. You know, basically, here's the new, the new part. The new part is predicting who's the precipitate. That guy is the precipitate because of the guys, when you rearrange them, when this guy went with him and when he went with him, one of those is going to be insoluble. And the weird part of it is the insoluble one gets the S because he means he's a solid. The soluble one gets the AQ. So let's see if you can use that same you know, logic and do this one. Okay, copy that guy down. Barium iodide plus sodium phosphate. Good job. Yeah. Carry on. 
Thank All right. You. Did you finish this one up? No. Well, come on. Now, this time, you're going to have to look those guys up. Don't go too far because you better make sure there's a guy. If you look these two up, and what happens if both of them are soluble? Nothing. You don't have to finish it. Does that happen in this case? What are your two choices here? Let's take a look. I would say they're going to be barium phosphate, right? I can't fit all this on here, so I have to kind of write it smaller. And what? Barium phosphate plus what? Sodium iodide. Sodium iodide. Now, you look up barium phosphate, you look up sodium iodide. What do you find when you look up barium phosphate? It's insoluble. He's insoluble. So what letter goes next to barium phosphate? Yes. And a little s, exactly. Now you look up sodium iodide. What's he? So he gets a what? AQ. Now, if you finish the rest of that, underneath, write all the formulas. Okay, if you've been doing that, I hope you got something that looks like this. Oops, I don't want to use blue. Okay, it's not balanced. How do I balance that? Let's see. I need a three in front of this guy, right? I need a two in front of that guy. And I need a six in front of that guy. Alright. Don't forget to put you know your little AQs and your little S's where they belong. And don't forget to put your little down arrow. Now I put this last one on here, but you're gonna find that he's not gonna take me as long as the last one to do. Just copy that guy down and you'll see why. Copy those two down, and you'll see why it's not going to take me very long. What are the two possibilities I can get from this guy? Potassium nitrate, right, and sodium chloride. Y'all agree? Look those two up. Look up potassium nitrate and look up sodium chloride. What are they both? They're both not uh, on there. There's a big capital S, right? So they're both aqueous, right? Now, you've seen precipitates before. Take a look up here. You've seen me do a precipitate before. I took two clear solutions, I poured them together, and they turned cloudy, right? Well, this is what you would have seen if I took those two guys and added together. They would not turn cloudy. They would just be clear. They would just mix together and all be all happy in there, but there's no chemical reaction that went on. Sodium chloride, and, and, I mean, potassium chloride and sodium nitrate, 
simply do not react to give you a precipitate. So all I want you to put is a little X there. Okay? Save yourself some time. No, you're actually, technically, you should write no, no, not, not, no precipitate. And I often use the abbreviation PPT for precipitate to shorten that up a little bit. That's confusing. PowerPoint. Yeah, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah, no PowerPoint. Actually, what, this is a PowerPoint, you know, it's really a keynote. Yeah, I use PowerPoint. 